Here we are. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the ninth edition of the Salone della CSR dell'Innovazione Sociale. And thank you for uh, joining us at Channel One, both in presence and remotely. Uh, I'm Margherita Macellari, a Sustainability Manager at Message and Director at CSR Manager Network, uh, that is the Association of Sustainability Professionals in Italy. I'm glad to coordinate this uh, event uh, organized by the, promoted by the CSR Manager Network in collaboration with EASP, that is the European Association of Sustainability Professionals. Um, today we have the opportunity to discuss uh, about such a, I would say, a, an important uh, dynamic and mainstream issue such as the evolution of the role of sustainability professionals in our organization, but uh, with a larger perspective, I would say, in our societies. And we will do so both with a focus on Italy but also uh, thanks to the um, uh, contributions to our uh, European colleagues uh, uh, with the perspective of other main European countries. We will do so with uh, four fellow panelists here in presence with me. Uh, good afternoon, Claudia. It's a good pleasure afternoon. to see you in presence. Uh, Claudia Strasserra, a Chief Reputation Officer and Sustainability Manager in, at Bureau Veritas. Sorry, I didn't learn them by art, but uh, connected remotely, we have uh, from UK, Sam Helly, Group Director, Corporate Responsibility at Sustainability at Kinetic. F Good morning, Sam. Can you hear us? Welcome. Uh, great. Uh, then we have from French, Nicolas Perrin, uh, Head of CSR Unit at Enesis. And Hello. from Germany, we have Martina Prox, member of the board at VNU. Um, hello. Hello. Good, good afternoon, Martina. So thank you, first of all, for your availability today. Um, this is an open moment of discussion, so uh, the panel we will organize will be organized in five rounds, uh, if the time allowed us to do so, otherwise four rounds of questions uh, to our panelists. And then I would like to, to leave some space for a Q&A session at the end from attendees both here in presence and connected remotely. Uh, I would also ask to our panelists, uh, before answering the first question, to briefly introduce themselves, so their role and their background. Um, so let's start. Uh, right away, we have a lot of uh, things to share and to discuss. Um, and I will start with a question uh, to, to Claudia that I will then extend to all the other panelists. Indeed, indeed, we should know that Italy has been the first uh, country uh, to introduce a uh, UNI um, reference practice that basically, for the first time, define um, criteria, uh, qualification criteria uh, related to all those people that in organizations um, deal with uh, overseas sustainability aspects. Um, so, Claudia, in following, in following questions, I would like to uh, go a little bit deep inside the content. But at this point, I would ask you, um, let's say, the why behind this practice. So, why at this point in time um, did we feel the necessity to, let's say, formalize the approach? Thank you, Margherita. Hi to everyone. Um, I'm Claudia Strasserra. Uh, as Margherita suggested, I'm pleased to share a little bit of my background. I'm a sustainability manager and chief reputation officer at Buro Veritas Italia. And uh, I deal with uh, internal sustainability, meaning that I take care of improving our uh, approach towards sustainability as regards environment, as regards people. And I also take care of coordinating the services that 
we provide to our clients. Uh, we are a certification body, so of course we uh, train people, uh, we take care of uh, um, disseminating information and knowledge about sustainability. Um, we are here at the Salone uh, CSR, which is certified by Viro Veritas according to um, the, the standard of sustainable events. So it's really a very wide uh, series of in schemes and issues that I deal with. Um, coming to your uh, question, yeah, I think it's the right moment now. Um, there is a, a specific need that grew over the last couple of years. Um, I would say that five years ago uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, sustainability managers, but uh, we didn't feel uh, the need to formalize um, the criteria, the qualification criteria um, regulating our role and our skills. Recently, I would say over the last couple of years, there was a boom uh, in the request of sustainability professionals. I can see this happening, of course, in my company, but in all companies, in all the clients I'm visiting. So there is this boom of uh, skills related to sustainability. And for sure, uh, if you are in a company, if you are in the HR department, and if you wish to um, hire uh, a guy uh, dealing with sustainability, you really need to know how to identify the, the, the right people. And this practice is really going to support um, HR department, or in any case, uh, the, the board, in order to identify those who can really um, contribute to the development of sustainability. So uh, now, more than in the past, we really need to rely on criteria indicating the background, the competencies, the skills, um, the know-how that a sustainability professional needs to have. Uh, I can tell you that there, is, uh, there are many people claiming that they are dealing with sustainability, um, but it's important for a company hiring someone to detect the, the, the guys with the right experience, the, the right background. So I think these criteria are going really to help the market to, to choose the, the people with the proper uh, skills and competencies. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you very much. I totally see the point. We should also remember, um, remind to, to our attendees that the uh, reference practice is uh, uh, open free, so it can uh, freely be accessed uh, um, through the UNI uh, website. You just need to register and then you can download the practice. Uh, thank you so much. Um, for all the other colleagues, uh, well, you do not have a specific practice in your countries, I am right, but uh, am I right? So uh, could you confirm this, first of all? And secondly, do you feel the same needs? Uh, do you see the same contest in your uh, reference country? For instance, let's start from the UK perspective. Sam, I give you the floor, please. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm Sam Healy, as, um, as I was introduced, I'm Director of Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability at Kinetic. And so um, very similarly, I also look after our strategic approach to sustainability across our organisation. Um, I also sit on the board of our uh, professional body in the UK, the Institute of Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability. And we actually have, we don't have a document quite as detailed as the one that has just been published in Italy, which I think is fantastic. We do have a, uh, a framework document which I think aims to achieve something similar. So if I can perhaps make the comparisons with the two. So I completely uh, agree with, with uh, Claudia that the, sort of the, this is really now the moment. There has been such a step change in the focus and the interest on sustainability within organisations. And I agree that piece around hiring, I think, is really important. Um, but I think just to build on that, I think it will help within the profession. So I think those of us um, where it's our roles, I think it creates a really powerful framework to shape those competencies that we need. But it also helps us with our colleagues who have a passion and interest for sustainability and it might touch their role for them to help support their own development. So I think there's a really strong role for using frameworks like this for um, in-house and external training as well. So I'm just writing our responsible and sustainable leadership training and building a framework into that to allow um, 
leaders to understand sustainability and how it touches their roles. So I think it's it's a very powerful document. I think it's going to be incredibly useful. And I think it, it's great that um, it, it's open for others to share. We'll certainly be reviewing it more, more in the UK. Um, so thank you. Great, thank you, Sam. So we already map a possible area of collaboration, Claudia. <laughs> great. Glad about that. Thank you so much, Sam, for your contribution. Um, Martina, could you take the floor? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Martina Prox, um, background IT company. So leveraging the whole topic of uh, digitalization for sustainable change is my daily work and passion. And um, I'm also a member of the board of the German Association of Environmental Management and Sustainability Management Professionals. And we have as a strategic topic and the association identified um, to create guidance on qualification for sustainability professionals. Um, around a year and a half ago, we didn't come very far into that. So there is some sketches. Um, I wouldn't call it yet a framework. Um, for the situation in Germany, I can share. There is curricula, um, so an MBA specifically on sustainability management as an example. Um, also the whole continuous learning space offered by the um, chambers of commerce that um, they are offering courses and there is a sustainability manager. But in general, the qualification profiles that are really required are really diverse. So it's not that there is this one fits all and then you it's totally clear that's the person you need. Um, depending on the situation, um, you need more a data analyst or you re really need more some expert in environmental and sustainability management systems and how to integrate and connect that. Uh, and others are more yeah, into that whole field of reporting uh, uh, against all the different frameworks. And these, these roles are diverse and to have the one person that can really do all this, um, it's normally not in one person. It's several roles that a sustainability manager has to bring on board and to integrate. Um, that's what, what I would say as a first statement here. Thank you. Absolutely clear perspective. Um, from French. Um, yeah, from, from French. Very happy to, to be with you um, for uh, the, the, the afternoon and just to, to quickly introduce myself. Um, uh, I'm in charge of the CSR unit uh, at uh, Hennedis, who is um, uh, with uh, the electric utility in, uh, in France. And um, after several years in the uh, technical and operational management department of our company, uh, I took over uh, the, the head of the CSR unit um, on the, at the beginning of March uh, 2021. So it's very recently for me. Uh, for to answer, uh, to answer more precisely uh, the, the question, in fact, um, I think in France, in France, the needs are indeed the same, uh, the same, but in Italy, UK, and um, and Germany. But um, the, the question arises about whether the CSR tuning courses for project or or um, practitioner or executive, and um, also for uh, the skill block of uh, certain courses. You know. Uh, what I want to mean, for example, um, the criteria ESG for um, for a diploma uh, or a finance degree, you need to to, um, to detail and to, to write what is the main skill uh, uh, linked with uh, the, the, the need of the company. So, um, however, as far as I know, the approach is, for instance, not yet similar uh, to the Italian uh, to, to, to the, the Italian uh, approach um, because uh, many courses are mainly given today in business school 
for one part or engineering school for uh, the other part. And uh, uh, this different organism of uh, formation um, are syllabuses who are evaluated elsewhere, not directly on CSA responsibility, but it's an, a global analysis of, um, of the, the competence and skill um, detail in the, the different uh, courses. For, for, for the company and for the professional, we obviously have a detail of job function, but framework, as you will, as you say, but it doesn't seem to me to be as complete as your approach, or um, at least as share between the different company. Um, but, but say the, the pressure uh, for this moment, the pressure to recruit qualified people is such that the training field will have we will have to structure itself to, to, to be able to train employable um, uh, the, the talent, the different type of talent quickly in our company. Thank you very much for this uh, first round of answers and um, uh, contribution. I would start from this last intervention uh, by Nicolas. Uh, Starting from competencies, you um, repeated a lot the importance, you underlined the importance of evolving competencies and skills that must be customized, that must be developed um, thanks to the educational um, 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 path, but for, of course uh, thanks to the learning on the job activities. Um, we see that we now see new or, re or relatively new uh, more economic models uh, affirming such as um, circular economy uh, models sharing economy impact uh, economy purpose economy and so on and on the other hand at the same time we see uh, a regulatory landscape that is uh, evolving um, um, more and more uh, faster and faster uh, I recall, for instance, uh, Martina, the uh, law on corporate uh, due diligence in supply chains that is quite new. It was published and it was approved in the summer, during this summer. So uh, how do you think uh, competencies of a sustainability professionals should evolve or are evolving in order to answer these growing and continuous stimuli from the context we are experiencing? Martina, would you like to start in yeah, our... Absolutely. Um, so when, when we received your initial questions, I was asking a bit around and what we see in professionals that um, try to get into jobs, um, that especially the regulatory knowledge, so knowledge about details on legislation, let's say, is a weak point. Um, it's uh, people... There, it seems to be very specialized. So you need to have someone who is really specialized in compliance and understands compliance. And then this regulatory knowledge is there. If you, uh, if someone considers himself a sustainability professional, very often um, the knowledge on the regulation is not much beyond the name dropping in an initial case. That's what uh, that's what we observe and probably we will have to come up with um, like different domains of expertise within the field of sustainability because it's so broad that there's, it's totally impossible for one prof even one profession um, and one person to fully cover that. And so probably, especially in that regulatory space, there will be a domain that needs to be emphasized because you have to catch up so quickly on that and you will get, yeah, to be like focusing on that. That's what, what we see. That's very interesting. Claudia, I, I don't see this um, compliance aspect so key in our market. What do you think? Well, I think Compliance is, uh, of course, crucial, but we know that uh, sustainability means going beyond compliance. We, we need to know 
the level of compliance. We have to make sure they com that compliance is granted and then, of course, uh, build uh, uh, something going beyond. But I was just considering uh, what Martina said and uh, uh, though I agree that there are many competencies and it's very difficult for one single person to cover in detail all aspects. I think that the approach that in Italy we have, we have chosen, I mean the approach of the PDR, is emphasizing the ability to cover um, several aspects. So the, the ability to have the big picture. I think in, in the approach of the uh, PDR, uh, we emphasize the importance uh, for a sustainability professional of keeping the mind open. Um, catching the big picture. Of course, this doesn't mean that you are uh, an expert, um, a specialist of each specific sector. You can't be an energy manager and at the same time um, an expert of uh, um, social aspects of human rights. But you need to have a, an adequate level of understanding in order to be able to coordinate uh, maybe other guys, maybe a team, covering in detail the specific aspects. So I, um, I think that this is the key, um, the vision that we have adopted in the PDR. So we are um, enlightening this uh, role of a sustainability professional as a person that has the ability to connect aspects in a big picture integrate these aspects into the daily business of the company. Thank you, Claudia. I think this is a key point also because uh, sustainability professionals must be able to integrate sustainability in all the other functions. So it's important to be able to speak other languages, to be able to rephrase what we mean of sustainability when we, when we speak with uh, our um, colleagues uh, from procurement or legal or uh, any other office uh, in, in the company. What about the UK or French perspective? Um, in France, for, for example, in France, and without pretending represent all the company, because it, um, it can be really different with the size of the organization. Um, but we also generally dis distinguish two levels of professional um, for this moment. Um, first level of project manager officer or project manager level, um, who is someone who deal with a ever or dedicated project or several projects, but in the same field of the competence. Uh, same thing of competence, compliance, as you say, uh, environment, social issue, dialogue and cooperation with the stakeholder, for example. And another level, uh, 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 another level, more managerial level, um, which um, in addition to the, the, the usual skills of management, must have um, a veneer, uh, the, the big picture, a, a large scale, um, with a minimum of, of knowledge of CSR to uh, to be in, in, to be in, uh, uh, to be able to to, to, to manage and, and enhance as um, the attempt of the organization. Um, in France, we are um, um, specifically uh, organize the CSR field of, between uh, in, in one part the social. Uh, social issue and, and the other part, environmental strategy. It, it will be um, uh, the, the conclusion of uh, the, the ESP uh, study care in the, uh, there two years ago. Uh, in France, the country where, uh, where uh, the CSR manager really invests these two cases, environmental and social issue. Compliance and uh, cooperation and dialogue with the stakeholder are sometimes um, and in many times, sorry, um, um, attached to 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 over area of company. 
not not at, at the CSR department. Okay, I see the point. So, basically, you mainly have two different figures uh, dealing with, on the one hand, social; on the other hand, environmental issues. Right? You usually have two persons within the CSR unit dealing with these aspects. They are not integrated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Sam. Um, so I think I'm probably just going to build on uh, what, what colleagues have just said, and I think perhaps to add a, a, a slightly different dimension is, is one of the key skills for a sustainability professional is that understanding of materiality, which is how to take all of this enormous landscape all of the change, all of the rapidity, and turn it into something really material for their organisation. So it can seem enormous, but actually what they're doing is, is turning it into a series of priorities across both environmental, social and governance issues, ESG. And I think it's, it's that element, that's a key part. So it's that big picture thinking, and then it's translating it into something that's truly material to your organisation. And then I think building again what others have said is around the embedding but also being a catalyst within your organization and working within your organization with others in other functions so you don't have to have all the knowledge but you do need to unlock and unleash that capability within your business and you don't have to do it yourself you just need to know that it's happening but I think increasingly what we're seeing in the UK is the need to um, collaborate across sectors or collaborate externally as well. So a big part of the, um, you know, the sustainability profession skill set is that networking and collaborating externally. And we're seeing a lot of that certainly in the UK because many of these challenges are so big, they're greater than one company. So this is going to have to be a shared endeavour. So I think those evolving skills, both your technical knowledge but also those softer skills around collaboration, embedding, materiality are going to be absolutely critical and very much evolving. I mean, I've, I've been in this role 14 years and the skill set that I had when I started the job compared to what I need, the skills and the role now is, has really evolved, I think. Thank you and thank can you I for... Quickly, can yeah? I quickly sure, challenge um, a, a bit the question on... Uh, compliance is what you have to do and sustainability is beyond. For me, this feels really old. This is no longer the truth. Um, co uh, sustainability becomes so much a, a part of what a company has to do. So it's not in this vo voluntary beyond space. There are so many sustainability topics that are at the core of the strategy of a company and needs to be fully operationalized and embedded as quality and compliance topics are already. That's, I just wanted to not leave that um, sustainability is be going beyond compliance uncommented in the room. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. That's thank right. You. And thank you, Sam, for recalling the importance of the materiality tool that it's not just a reporting tool, but it's absolutely a strategic tool to define priorities for each company. So, um, and recalling this last intervention of Martina, um, I would ask you to focus a little bit more on the role that sustainability professionals have in the companies. Um, for instance, Claudia, uh, in the reference practice, if I remember well, you uh, recall you defined two main job descriptions related to sustainability professionals, uh, sustainability manager and practitioners. So which are the role that uh, at least the, the, the practice um, expect these two kind of figures to play within the organization? Correct, you remember well, there are two roles, the manager and the practitioner. And the manager is, is clear, is a manager, so is a person um, with the responsibility of a team, um, of a group of other uh, people dealing with sustainability. The practitioner doesn't have the responsibility of a team, so he's uh, working, probably supporting the manager. But I think the, 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 the interesting thing to be noticed is that both manager and practitioner needs to have uh, the, the same wide coverage of issues. So uh, the practitioner is uh, um, competent in several aspects, um, 
but the difference with the manager is that he or she does not um, lead a team. And of course, for sure, uh, we can see that the practitioner is going to grow and becomes a, a manager, maybe after five years of experience. In the um, reference document, uh, uh, there is a clear indication of years of experience after uh, which you can uh, um, become uh, a manager. And of course, experience is crucial, but it's also training also is crucial because uh, as uh, the other speakers were um, considering, uh, this role is evolving and you need to, to learn, to study, um, to catch up with the news. So constant training is essential and it's one of the requ requirements that is set in the reference document. Thank you. And uh, you said, uh, so the, the sustainability practitioner obviously can grow becoming a sustainability manager. What about the sustainability manager? I mean, um, in part, I expected to see like a role of chief sustainability officer, a sustainability officer that is not present in the, in the practice. Did you analyze this other role? Not for the moment, but as we were saying, everything is evolving so maybe in some years we will be here commenting the uh, the role of chief uh, sustainability officer at the time being um, the, the manager we are indicating could be also a chief sustainability officer meaning uh, we didn't uh, identify a specific position uh, in the organization um, chart so Definitely, I personally hope that uh, um, the, the person in charge of sustainability, let's call it manager or uh, chief sustainability officer, can report directly to, to the board. This is um, essential uh, because it, with this position, of course, the sustainability manager or officer can really um, involve and guide uh, at, from the strategic point of view the company. And this um, strategic point of view is emphasized in the reference document uh, as uh, mm, within the boundaries. Strategy is within the boundaries of this manager or officer. So since you deal with strategy, I think we, you can really grow and become an officer, a chief sustainability officer. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia. About the other perspectives, um, let's say if we um, split possible uh, areas of action of a sustainability professionals in uh, strategy, reporting, management, corporate citizenship activities. In your respective countries, where do you see sustainability professionals playing the um, involved the most? I can perhaps um, give you a UK perspective. I would probably say all of them at high level but I think there are some definite priorities coming to the fore because of what's what's happening globally. So I think um, a lot of sustainability professionals who may have had a professional energy team helping them with their, their carbon footprint are now much more involved because net zero is a strategic approach. It's bigger than your operations. It covers your value chain. So I think there's been a reconnecting and an ownership in that space. I think another area that we're seeing in the UK is a greater ownership around diversity and inclusion and well-being. So obviously, as we look at the ESG agenda, I think um, the S has maybe traditionally been around community investment. And actually, I think what we're seeing more is a trend around diversity and inclusion and uh, well-being, you know, off the back of, of COVID and looking at employee well-being and so on. I think there's, there's a real shift there. So going back to materiality, because it depends on the company, but I think we're seeing that really, really broad range of technical areas, but very much focused on the strategic approach. Um, I would say from a, a UK perspective, that's, that's certainly my, my experience. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, it's not usually the case uh, in other markets. Um, Nicolas, could you share your, your perspective from French? Um, re related to, um, to, to the, um, the boarding uh, at the scale of uh, practitioner to respond to 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 to, uh, to the needs of our company. Um, 
as as has been said, um, new needs, um, new needs, sorry, are are currently um, appearing in France, and um, we have a special example for me um, um, with the circular um, with a circular economy. It is very um, significant, it telling, um, because the regulation are evolving very quickly, and it, it's sometimes very difficult for our company to anticipate. To do more and, and better than the regulation, and for us, it's um, we we, we um, uh, remember we, that it's the ambition of uh, CSA policy. Uh, CSA policy is not to um, to um, to respect the regulation. It, it cannot simply to be comply with the law. We we, we must anticipate. We, we must do better and we must do do more than the, than the law. So in this context, it, it's it's not very easy, and it's not possible for a CSL professional to to uh, in, a, in a, a company uh, like uh, like my company to be uh, up to date uh, and uh, every subject. Um, but perhaps it's um, perhaps it's a question for for us for 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 all the panelists. Um, is it really our role? It is really our role to be uh, expert uh, in uh, each uh, type of uh, subject. Um, for, for, for example, in uh, in my company, in the sector of electricity and in like a utility uh, like uh, like Henedis, we are there are many 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 technical experts of different type of equipment, um, the cable, meter, cells, transformer, etc. And it's not possible for us to have um, a circular economy expert for plastic, for metal, for oils, for GIG, for other components of uh, our materials. So um, we need more um, an ensemble. Uh, we will regularly alert, question, coordinate, um, including with the very specialized experts like chemists, like electronic engineer, contract manager, and other, other uh, professional in our company. But the role of, um, of the CSR officer or CSR project manager is to, um, to make the coordination between all these type of, of uh, skills and uh, competence. And um, I think that the first skill of this sustainable development specialist is to able to deal with the complexity with multifactorial analysis in order to manage and lead a global approach, not to, uh, to be up to date on a very short picture uh, of a very, uh, very precisely object because it's it's not uh, the way to 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 manage the future for the type of my company for for company of my type. Thank you, thank you, Nicolas. What about Germany, Martina? Yeah, we were reflecting on in in our board team on the words a bit, and um, we understand sustainability manager not so much a leadership position. So um, chief sustainability officer or head of sustainability, um, we, we understand more as a leadership position. A sustainability manager can also be responsible only for a part, so more in the sense of a um, practitioner, as was, uh, was explained. Uh, and there's many words. Uh, and the sustainability professional often is more considered as the practitioner, as uh, has been described by Claudia. Um, and we have more words for that. Um, we have the professional, the manager, the analyst, the expert, and there is so, uh, senior and junior level related to that. Um, and then you have the, we don't ha have too often the CSR still, so CSR is go getting less uh, and it's becoming more into um, associated with very voluntary activities while all the others are coming more associated to um, circular economy and 
um, the reflection within the companies through the circular economy action plan, also through product carbon transparency across supply chains are very much associated with supply chain management, purchasing, um, and also the design for sustainability, design for circularity, design for whatever you put want to put there, but starting and integrating it into the development of the company and bringing it into the, the topic really um, to the desk of those that shape the future of a product, of a service, of an, of an organization. And so this chief sustainability officer has a very strategic position and role to cover. And, um, and he needs all these experts to tell him what is happening with product passports, what we can expect regarding the circular economy action plan in our sector, how to translate the wordy guidance documents into something that becomes a strategy and gets us prepared for when the regulation comes. And I think I have managed analysts, data people. I've never talked to, I know I'm from an IT company, but I've never talked in first meetings so often with IT people than in the last two years. Normally, IT people come in, into this game on how to calculate a carbon footprint after 10 meetings. Now they're sitting at the table in the first meeting. And I want to know all the details in the, um, right from the start. So it's becoming 100% integrated. That's what we see. It's not such a, a, a topic that is next to the business. It's core of the business. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing these, uh, these ideas, these expertise, also because we know that with the non-financial disclosure directive, with the new corporate uh, sustainability reporting directive, a lot of companies are starting now their sustainability path. So we have, in many cases, um, we still have a strong focus on reporting, but you share a, a, a path that is more and more integrated in strategies, so I think that it's a very important, important message. Uh, just a last question. Um, unfortunately, our hour together is almost finished, so just one last question. Mm, till now, we analyzed the aspect, uh, we analyzed the issue from the, uh, let's say, the offer side of the, of the labor market. Looking at the demand side, we know that um, youngest generations um, do not look for any job. They look uh, for job where they can really generate impact. So there's a um, completely uh, evolution in their in their ambition. Um, from your side, from your perspective, is the uh, current educational offer uh, properly structured and prepared to? answer to respond to the evolving context we have just described and to this ambition um, evolution that young generation are bringing at the table france first france needs to go france first france first <laughs> thank you um in france it, uh, we, we consider it it, it, it can be um it can be an opportunity. Uh, it can be a, an opportunity, but in a, in a special context, um, um, with one one condition, uh, especially. Uh, not um, in France. In French, you, we say not more daddy style, see you sir. Um, we have to uh, to change about our approach of of CSR to. Uh, to, to manage two 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 things, the, the um, um, to manage the the, the, the push of, of uh, next generation you you sorry, and um, to um, to make the adequation with um, the, the response of, of the market, and um, it's a it's a context I, I want to share with you. Um, uh, 
the, the, the main um, the main idea of uh, an article by uh, Fabrice Bonifay, who chair of the College des Directeurs du Développement Durable, the C C3D, the, something like that, um, yes, 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 in, yes. in, uh, in Italy. Yeah? And um, he, he was, he is uh, the, the CSM manager of uh, a major construction group. And uh, he published a very interesting article uh, in September. Um, why did we stop pretending to change things? You know, and um, he states five false beliefs of CSR, something like that. Uh, CSR allow company to reconcile sustainability with making money more. It's not true. Uh, CSR promotes the emergence of green growth. What is really green growth? Um, CSR is a driver of technological innovation, and we are many in France to to to, to think that techno solution in in the service of CSR will not allow us to maintain the consumer risk and resource intensive airing we apply. So there are five five item like that, and um, we have to to manage differently our responsibility with a more st strategic growth and a more strategic definition for what we want to do really in our company and uh, in the different market. Um, in, this, in this market, in this context, um, the, the higher education offered in the, in the field of sustainable development in France is is becoming more and more structured, but with the, um, with this type of new orientation, and and uh, we receive in our company new generation. We are more professional, but also more exigent. In, in English, you understand me. More, more exigent about uh, what what is the way of life of our company and, and what can we do really in our company to change uh, to change a part of the world. Thank you, thank you, Nicolas. Claudia. Well, I I totally agree with you, Margarita, uh, when you said that young people look for sustainable companies. And um, I can see this when we have interviews with young people wishing to join our company. They ask us, what are you doing as regards environment, as regards uh, staff and so on. So I think companies need to be attractive from a sustainable point of view, need to show uh, young people of course, need to show everyone, but especially young people, what they are doing, their plans, their strategy. And I think this is going to um, be really important if you want to select uh, um, the best talents. They will choose a company because of its engagement uh, towards sustainability. Thank you, Claudia. Absolutely. Employer branding and sustainability uh, are totally linked today. Sam? Yes, I think certainly when we think about um, young people and how we can get them involved in sustainability, there's probably three three elements. And the first is at school, and I think we're seeing more conversations on sustainability at school. And certainly those organisations that work with schools through outreach are seeing that as well. We are being asked to deliver you know, programmes around environment. I think the next step is around education and the opportunity for them to... Um, look at sustainability either full-time or, or part of something through the, the careers that they're choosing and I think there are there are growing numbers of options so in the UK we've just launched a sustainability um, apprenticeship and I think that's fantastic because I think it's that that opportunity to um, enter into sustainability but working as well so I think apprentices have really blossomed in the UK and then absolutely building building on um, Cloud has just said around you know making yourself as attractive as an organization and I think giving uh, young people that opportunity to get involved immediately 
particularly when they start in the organisation, to know what you're doing, but to be participants, whether it's through environmental volunteering about projects they can work on. So I think absolutely, I think there are many touch points for young people to um, drive the debate. And we have a programme called Reverse Mentoring, where our early careers community are mentoring our senior leadership. And absolutely, these conversations around sustainability are coming up, which is very powerful. So I think um, really a, a demographic that's so critical to the success of sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And uh, let's share practices. Also, at CSR Manager Network, we could do more about this this issue. And if we already have good practices, uh, such as the UK one, absolutely, Sam, if you are available, let's explore it more aside from this event. Martina? I like reverse mentoring. I have to take a note on that. I've never, I've never heard it, and I really I want to try that. That's cool. Um, yeah, education the young people. Um, what what I've been like looking for people to to uh, increase the team um, sustainability consultant with the topic of carbon footprinting, and we wanted more experienced people, um, but everybody wants more experienced people at the moment. So we really go into um, getting younger people on board, and there is a lot of curricula out there which um, train them already quite well with something to resource efficiency, something to sustainability, something to environmental engineering. Um, there's none which gives the whole picture. And I, what we consider, we need these experts and we need these experts for a couple of at least years, um, but in the end, this, these skills will need to go into every engineering, every business um, school curriculum, every, everything which is related to production systems and how we operate um, and how we produce needs to um, have integrated sustainability aspects and how to measure and how to manage them uh, in order to um, yeah, not have it as an as an island and as a isolated skill, but as an integrated skill. So I think we are in a huge transition and transformation during the next five to ten years, and then we will see newly shaped um, jobs out there. That's um, how I would see that education is coming and. I've been in a purpose-driven company since all my life, for 25 years, and so um, purpose-driven makes it easy to find employees. Thank you, Martina. People want to work with you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's an important point. So integration, I would say that it's our word today. We need more integration within the company, among functions, uh, outside the company, because we are facing challenges that are bigger and bigger. So thank you to all our panelists, uh, Sam, Martina, Nicolas, and Claudia. You're with me in presence. Unfortunately, our time is uh, run out already, but I think we shared a lot of synergies and we also met some possible collaboration and I think that's wonderful because we need to move and to move together so uh, I thank you, uh, all the uh, attendees remotely and in presence here at Bocconi University in Milan and enjoy the program of the Salone della CSR e dell'Innovazione Sociale today and tomorrow thank you bye 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 thank you bye thank you thank bye -bye. you bye bye